Okay, today's discussion is going to be about weak bases. Now, um, we did speak about before how a strong base is going to be an alkali metal plus hydroxide and calcium strontium barium plus hydroxide, but weak, weak bases can sometimes be a little um, harder to identify um, because oftentimes these weak bases do not um, contain a hydroxide. They produce a hydroxide, though. So we'll take the generic form of a weak base as we'll use B to represent base aqueous, dissolved in water, and we're going to produce, what's going to happen here is the water is going to be donating uh, the proton to the base, and so water is going to form a hydroxide ion, and then we're going to have HB plus aqueous um, as our two products, the hydroxide. So our tip-off that we have a base is one, um, we have the production of a hydroxide. Another way we can uh, be tipped off about um, uh, a base is if they gave us, they give us a Kb um, um, value and Kb being our um, base dissociation constant much like Ka was our, our, our acid dissociation constant, Kb is going to be our base. Now, for the base dissociation constant, we can write the expression just like we would write the expression for the Ka. Um, we can put products, so Hb plus, hydroxide ion, all over our base. And of course, we're going to leave water out of that equation because it's a pure liquid. So let's take a look at what this looks like in a, um, a, an actual equation. So. Um, a real good example of a weak base would be ammonia, which is NH3, and we're going to react this with water, pure liquid, and we're going to form the ammonium ion, and we're going to form a hydroxide. What happens is the water is acting like our acid, it's going to donate um, the proton to the ammonium, or the ammonia, and it's going to form ammonium and by losing that, hydro that proton or that, hy that hydrogen ion, it forms a hydroxide. We could write our base dissociation constant here of Kb is equal to the ammonium ion multiplied by our hydroxide ion all over ammonia. And we could look up in the appendix um, the value, which is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, which is surprisingly the same value is the Ka for acetic acid, um, although there's no relation between those two. It just happens to turn out that way. So now that we're given this, um, we can do a problem involving this. And so let's do a problem. And these problems work exactly the same way um, as, as our Ka problems do. Um, there's just one little curveball. So we'll say the problem is going to be calculate the concentration of the hydroxide solution and the pH um, of a a 0 uh, 0.15 molar solution of NH3 and given Kb is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth as we said earlier. Okay, so there's our problem, and um, what we're going to do is, first off, we'll write our um, dissociation equation, given NH3 um, aqueous is going to react with water, liquid, to form ammonium ion, as we said before, and the hydroxide ion, just as well. Just like that. Um, we're going to form an ice table here. Um, it does tell us up above that we do have a 0.15 molar solution there, and so that's going to be my initial concentration, 0.15 molar. We're not going to deal with the water at all because it's a pure liquid. It's just included. It's included just to show that the, um, the proton was being donated from the water to the um, ammonia. And so we don't have any of this to start off initially, just like that. Okay, so that's all we're given. We're not, we're not being given the pH of the solution. We're being asked to calculate the pH of the solution. So this reaction is going to go... Um, obviously to the right, and so we're going to have plus x, plus x, x and x, and then we're going to have 0.15 minus x over here. Um, 
scroll down a little bit. And so let's write the KB expression. KB is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, which is equal to um, our products from the equilibrium line is going to be x times x, which is going to be x squared over um, 0.15 minus x. Now, hopefully you can recognize from, from this type of um, setup that we can make an assumption here, and the assumption is that x is going to be so small that we can just ignore it, um, and we'll double check to make sure that's less than 5% below, um, otherwise we need to use the quadratic formula to solve for this. And so um, we're going to assume it's small. And so we're going to go, we're going to solve for x. So we'll take 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth multiplied by 0.15 equals x squared. We're then going to take the square root of both sides to solve for x. So I'm going to get x equals um, in this 1.64 times 10 to the negative third. Now um, that x is going to be plugged back in to the equilibrium line right there or actually, and it'll be plugged in right there because it is a one-to-one -one ratio. Wasn't looking there because the hydroxide was in. So this is going to be equal to our hydroxide ion concentration. Something that we have to remember with bases is we're going to get a hydroxide ion concentration. Now the problem did ask for pH, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the negative log, the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration, which is going to give me pOH. And so when I take the negative log of x, or the hydroxide ion concentration, I get the pOH is equal to 2.78. Um, big mistake students make here is they take the negative log of x and they say that's the pH. But we remember this is a base and so this pH of 2.78 would definitely be an acidic solution. So to get um, pH, we're going to take 14 and we're going to subtract it from 2.78 using that formula of, um, of uh, uh, pH plus pOH equals 14. And so we're going to subtract here from 14 to get 11.2, and that is going to be our pH. So again, um, just one of the small differences between a weak acid and a weak base in these problems is that we are solving for um, a hydroxide ion concentration often, and um, we're going to have to subtract from 14 to get the pH from the pOH. And that is, um, that is it for tonight's lecture.